Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Handy Skill Mastery. This is Dave, and I promised you I'd come out with another video in this video series about the Mosaic Palette 3 Pro. So this is video number two. If you remember last week we opened up the Palette 3 Pro when it arrived, and I uh, was quite happy with the quality of the product and the way it looked, everything it came with, the extras, and how easy it was to set up. So remember, this is the Pro model. We got eight inputs. It means we can use eight different color filaments or eight different types of filament. Now, one thing I want to mention is, as you can see there, I have the Micro Swiss all metal hot end. There shouldn't be an issue, but for some reason, I was not able to print using my hot end, uh, so Mosaic is looking into it for me. I uh, had to go back to the factory setup. Not a big deal, so this is the setup here. I've decided to put the pallet on the left where I usually put some tools, and it just snakes right into the side hole of my Wham Bam enclosure. The Wham Bam enclosure is a pretty good uh, box. Um, I have a fan, exhaust fan on it for printing PLA and non-high temperature materials. We can talk about that in another episode. I'll tell you all about it. But for today, I wanted to show you the setup and what I've been doing over the last week. So I had to learn the software, the Canvas software, which is what you get with the Palette 3 or the Palette 3 Pro. You know, you'll notice that um, I have it in dark mode, you can also have it in white mode. This is where you drop your models in. So I have put two models in here. One is just a plate, a couple, it's a few millimeters tall, and the other one is just text. They're both STL files, which we're, you know, we're used to, we're used to designing with. Uh, so you can see the eight different colors that, that that represents the eight different inputs on my palette Because it's the pro model now you can select different colors for each um, So as you can see I'm, us I'm using the paintbrush uh, And you'll see that it's painting using triangles and some people might not know this but 3D models, all 3D models, no matter how simple or complex, are made up of triangles. There could be millions of them. In fact, usually there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions, depending on the complexity of the model. So, what I've done here is I've selected one of the models, okay? So, uh, you already saw me paint the first model uh, uh, blue. This is the second model, okay? It's the subscribe uh, text. Now, I'm using the paintbrush, as you can see, and just looking for the color that I want. There it is, white. Notice how this model is not exactly um, that detailed. So you can see the, uh, you can see the triangles. It's kind of frustrating to paint when you're using the paintbrush, um, you know, uh, but that's why we have the fill bucket. But there comes some complication with the fill bucket as well, and I'll show you what I mean. I'm just finished filling this here. Now, let's say you want to fill up a whole letter. Okay, so we did that. We just filled up the whole S, the whole R, the I, And what I'm showing you now is you can create regions. It, let's say you wanted, and there's three different ways, three levels, so you can get really granular here. Um, now, we'll get into this in a future episode because I want this just to be a primer, but by using these three parameters and changing them around, you can create regions of your model and the regions are outlined as you can see. Now this gives us 
ability to use the paint bucket. Oh, that was the brush. We're going to use the paint bucket to fill in the regions that we have created. Pretty cool. I definitely think this was well thought out. I mean, think of models that are very complex and you want to get detailed in some areas with your, you know, with your colors and you want to be uh, just general and fast in some other areas. Well, that's the beauty of, uh, of the Canvas software. And I've been playing around with it and trying different settings. And uh, like I said, there will be future episodes that are going to show you a deeper dive into uh, each individual uh, setting, how to set up your printer in Canvas so that it works optimally with the palette, and also just the many features because this is also a slicer. When you're using the palette, you do have the option to use uh, the slicer, Slick 3R, as some people call it, but um, Canvas is just awesome. I'm coming to to uh, to see, and I'm a Kira guy. I I love Kira. Um, that's what I've been using for the last year, uh, and so I was hesitant to switch over to a different slicer. But you know what? This thing is pretty powerful, and I'll show you that in the next episode. Uh, this is a basic slice. Uh, it's just showing you right now, I'm showing you how I was able to paint those two different models and then use the canvas software to align them. Now I put the text on top, but you can also put the text to flush with the, uh, with the blue square so that it prints flush. You can also do it upside down. Now notice here in this area it shows drive 4 and drive 5. That just means that there's uh, white filament going into slot number 4 and blue filament going into slot number 5 on the palette. And there is a total of two splices. It's pretty simple. Just It's just transitioning from blue to white. So we're just starting off with a very simple model pretty much the simplest you can get and this is might look familiar from any other slicer that you might use um, okay so here's just a quick time lapse uh, hopefully quick looks quick hopefully you don't get dizzy <laughs> um, I'm sorry if you do I just wanted you to see um, that there is no manual filament change because technically you can do this print manually, right? If you pause when the blue is done printing, purge it out, put in some white filament, resume the print, and then it would print the word subscribe. But this is all happening automatically. I, I didn't do this manually at all. I designed it, I painted it just like you saw, and it printed out beautifully. I had not really tweaked with any settings. Um, and again, the extruder, the hot end that you're seeing in here is the factory Creality style hot end. It's not the all metal micro Swiss. Next episode, we'll uh, discuss that. So there it is, the subscribe tag. Turned out okay, a little bit stringy. Uh, I went for a second run, did some adjustments, uh, changed some colors, used a different model. Um, now, this uh, again, it, this is not the all metal hot end. I will let you guys know what's up with that, whether or not Micro Swiss hot ends or all metal hot ends in general need you know a firmware update on the palette we'll see um, so the quality isn't there as uh, as I'm used to but now notice 
It printed nice, it did what it was supposed to do, but there was some color bleeding. You can see some red at the top and in the middle of the B. So that's called splice tuning. We're gonna have to get into that in the next episode. I'll teach you a lot about splice tuning and just stay tuned for more. There'll be tons more coming about the palette three and guys I want to thank you please subscribe I won't disappoint you there's lots of skills we can share learn ask questions leave comments and we'll see you next time